Welcome to Tips and Tricks in Kofax RPA. This is RoboBear, and before we start, make sure you first check out our training series to get familiar with core concepts, as we'll be tackling more complex subjects here. When building a new robot, you will inevitably run into the problem of random errors. Maybe a web connection times out, an application is unresponsive, a pop-up blocks processing, or gnomes invade your code. Since the goal is to automate, we want our robots to be able to handle such situations by themselves. A good idea is to close everything and start the execution again. This will solve the vast majority of random errors, and your robot will be able to complete the task without crashing. So, we recommend that at the start of any robot, you add a global error handler. Let's build one together. In order to restart the execution, we'll first need a repeat step. This will encompass your entire robot code, so it can restart everything when needed. Next, we need a try step to capture any errors encountered. Let's give it a specific name so we can target it directly. For example, we can call it error handler. Now, if an error is encountered, the second branch is activated. We will need this branch to send us back to the repeat step, so let's add the next step. Ok, our loop is functional. We can group our steps together, and then add the dummy click step that will always generate an error. In order for the error to go to our loop, we will need to reference it directly in the error handling section. Use try next alternative and select error handler in the dropdown. You need to do this for all relevant steps, as right now there is no faster way of achieving this functionality. We can see our error handler restarting the execution each time an error is encountered. The problem now is that we have an endless loop. Maybe the error cannot be fixed by simply restarting, and we don't want the robot to get stuck on this forever. Let's add another branch that will stop our robot in case of a critical failure. For this, we can use a stop step. In order to decide whether the robot should stop or not, we also need two integer variables. As a best practice, we usually create a type named framework to hold various variables that perform technical tasks within a robot. Right now, we need a variable to hold our retries, so we will name it robot retry counter, and a variable to determine how many retries should be performed before closing the robot. We will name it robot retry max. When adding your framework type to your robot, make sure you set it as global, so it can hold values across robot restarts. The uninitialized retry counter starts at zero, which is fine for our purpose. However, we do need to give a value to our retry max before the loop starts. You could add it as a default value in the type, but that's harder to maintain, so instead we recommend it use an assign step before the repeat step. Let's say the robot should retry a maximum of two times before shutting down. Now we just need to build our condition, so add the test step on the second branch before the next step. If our retry counter is less than or equal to retry max, then proceed. Otherwise, we will go on the third branch of the try step. Also, we need our retry counter to increase each iteration. So let's add an assign step before the test step. Simply increase the counter by 1. Excellent! Now we can see the robot restarts twice before shutting down. To add a bit of transparency to the process, let's also add some logging. If the robot does perform a retry, we will add a write log step where we say error encountered, restart 1 out of 2. We can use our retry variables to generate this message. If the robot fails, we will use another write log step where we can say critical failure stopping execution. Let's run it in debugger and see the error handler in action. We can see each error encountered, followed by our retry log, then the final message when robot stop. You can expand the structure as needed. For example, you can add components that log out and close applications, or make the robot send you an email in case of critical failure, or even take a screenshot of the error. It's up to you how you use it. We hope this structure helps you build amazing robots. 
Thank you for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe.